Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and you will love economics. An unregulated monopoly will overcharge consumers and produce output at an allocatively and productively inefficient level. With a lack of competition in the industry, these monopolistic inefficiencies will persist, leading to wasted resources, underproduction of products, and unsatisfied consumer utility. However, when social goals dictate, government can regulate a monopolist by manipulating price and quantity to meet social needs. In this video, we'll take a look at how the government can use price controls to regulate monopolies. Let's start with socially optimal price regulation. Monopolies are allocatively inefficient because they underproduce their output. When government wants to boost industry output and increase allocative efficiency in a monopolistic market, it can enact socially optimal price regulation to accomplish these goals. Like all other firms, monopolies won't voluntarily change output and price to meet more consumer utility or improve the general welfare of society. Because the monopolist has a profit motive, it will set its profit maximizing level of output where the marginal revenue of the last unit produced equals its marginal cost. On the graph, this optimal level of output can be found where the marginal revenue curve intercepts the marginal cost curve. In order to force the firm to increase its output to an allocatively efficient level, the government must change the marginal revenue of each unit sold in order to alter the monopoly's profit maximization point. Government can accomplish this goal by setting an effective price ceiling that limits or caps the market price charged by the monopolist. Remember that a firm cannot legally charge a market price that exceeds an effective price ceiling. As such, the monopolist has an incentive to charge the price set by the government because it's the highest price it's capable of charging. When the firm sells all of its output at the government established price, the revenue gained from each unit sold will equal the market price. Effectively, the firm's marginal revenue curve and demand curve become identical, and the two curves become perfectly elastic. For the regulated monopolist, demand equals marginal revenue equals price at the government established price ceiling. So where should the price ceiling be set if the government wants the monopoly to produce an allocatively efficient level of output? Remember that a perfectly competitive industry is allocatively efficient when it's at market equilibrium. The quantity supplied by the firm equals the quantity demanded by consumers, and both consumer and producer surplus are maximized. For the monopolist, the socially optimal level of output can be produced when the price per unit equals the marginal cost of the last unit sold. In a perfectly competitive industry, this would be the point where market supply equals market demand and the industry is at equilibrium. By setting a price ceiling at this price, the government creates a demand and marginal revenue curve for the firm that is perfectly elastic effectively altering the monopoly's profit maximization point and providing an incentive for the firm to increase its output until the marginal cost of the last unit produced equals its marginal revenue. With socially optimal price regulation in place, the monopoly has gone from underproducing its goods to producing the socially optimal level of output. The deadweight loss that existed due to monopolistic inefficiency is eliminated. Both consumer and producer surplus are being maximized, and the monopoly is allocatively efficient. Let's analyze the impact of this regulation. The goal of socially optimal price regulation is to successfully eliminate allocative inefficiency in a monopolistic market. Did it accomplish this goal? Yes. Free of any regulation, the monopoly was under allocating resources and underproducing its products. With an effective price ceiling in place where price equals marginal cost, the firm now has an incentive to boost its output 
and produce an allocatively efficient quantity of goods and services to better meet society's needs and wants. Unfortunately, socially optimal price regulation does nothing to solve the productive inefficiency of the monopolist. In fact, if the firm's production costs are too excessive and the price ceiling must be set at a price that falls below the firm's total cost per unit, it can turn the firm's economic profits into economic losses. In order to keep the monopoly in business, government may need to provide a per-unit subsidy to offset the firm's losses and motivate the monopolist to continue to produce an allocatively efficient level of output. Monopolies are also inefficient because they overcharge consumers. As the sole producer in the industry, the monopolist has price-setting power. This allows the monopolist to sell its goods at the highest price that consumers are willing and able to pay, according to market demand. Because goods are more expensive, some buyers are priced out of the market because they can't afford to pay the price set by the monopolist. This reduces consumer accessibility to economic goods prevents the maximization of consumer utility, and reduces consumer surplus for buyers. When government wants to reduce product price and increase consumer surplus in a monopolistic market, it can enact fair return price regulation to accomplish these goals. Again, government can accomplish this goal by setting an effective price ceiling that limits market price and alters the marginal revenue earned by the monopolist thus changing the firm's profit maximization point. But where should the price ceiling be set? With no other firms to compete with, the monopolist dominates the industry and earns economic profits in the long run. As such, fair return price regulation should be set where the price per unit equals the average total cost of production. On the graph, this is where price equals average total cost. By setting a price ceiling at this price, the government changes the marginal revenue curve for the firm, effectively altering the monopoly's profit maximization point and providing an incentive for the firm to increase its output until the average total cost of the last unit produced equals marginal revenue. It also caps the price the monopoly is capable of charging without forcing the firm to take economic losses. Instead, the firm earns enough marginal revenue to cover the total cost per unit, causing the firm to break even. You might be asking yourself, doesn't this hurt the firm? While it does eliminate the economic profits that an unregulated monopoly would normally earn, the firm can continue to dominate the industry while breaking even, given that there are no other firms to compete with. With fair return price regulation in place, the monopoly will produce a more allocatively efficient level of output and offer its products at a more affordable price. Let's analyze the impact of this regulation. The goal of fair return price regulation is to make economic goods more affordable in a monopolistic market. Did it accomplish its goal? Yes. Free of any regulation, the monopoly would charge consumers the highest price they were willing and able to pay, according to market demand. With an effective price ceiling in place, where price equals average total cost, the firm must reduce its product price because it cannot legally charge a market price that exceeds the price limit. The firm also has an incentive to scale production and boost its output. Not only do consumers have a greater output to consume, but they can now buy it at a cheaper price. Unfortunately, fair return price regulation doesn't completely eliminate productive inefficiency because the monopoly still produces its output at an average total cost that is greater than the lowest average total cost possible. It can also cause the monopolist to over-allocate its resources and overproduce its products. With the regulation in place, the firm has an incentive to produce its output until the average total cost of the last unit produced equals the marginal revenue earned at the government set price per unit. If the firm's total production costs are at a low enough level, the firm will have an incentive to increase its production beyond the allocatively efficient level. With fair return price regulation in place, the monopoly has gone from underproducing to overproducing its goods. The deadweight loss that existed due to monopolistic inefficiency is eliminated, 
but consumer surplus is over-maximized at the expense of producer surplus, proving that the monopolist is still allocatively inefficient. And that's regulating monopolies. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy the channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in macro and microeconomics, as well as quick macro and micro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my video on government intervention, or you can click here for my video on monopolistic competition. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on You Will Love Economics.